Hi, welcome back to my channel Quick Recapped. Today, I am going to explain The House with a Clock in Its Walls movie. That is an American fantasy film. Watch out and take care. A letter was written by Lewis's uncle Jonathan in 1995 asking Lewis to come and live with him, who had recently lost his parents. Upon reaching his destination, Lewis is met by his uncle Jonathan, who assists him with his baggage and expresses dissatisfaction with its heaviness. Lewis explains that the weighty luggage contains dictionaries as he liked to learning new words. Lewis expresses his desire to watch Captain Midnight before 10 o'clock, but Jonathan informs him that there is no television available. As they walk, the tolling of a bell from a grand dome surrounded by walls interrupts them, and Jonathan looks disapprovingly at the structure until the ringing stops. After boarding a shaky vehicle, they reach an eerie house where Lewis notices Jack O'Lanterns adorning the property. He inquires of Jonathan whether he has a strong attachment for Halloween. Jonathan replies that he embraces the Halloween spirit every day of the year. As they approach the entrance gates, a woman's voice calls Jonathan to return. The woman Mises Hanchet is the neighbor of Jonathan. She inquires if he had been playing his saxophone, but Jonathan replies that not everyone is capable of doing this art. Mises Hanchet informs Jonathan that she is not concerned about what he plays on his saxophone, but rather that he plays it at 3 am in the morning. Hanchet inquires about Lewis's identity and expresses surprise that Jonathan has taken on the responsibility of caring for another human being. Jonathan agrees to keep the noise level down but confesses that 3 am is his preferred time for playing the saxophone. Upon entering the house, Lewis is amazed by an exhibition of various clocks ticking in at same time. Lewis remarks to Jonathan that there are many clocks, but Jonathan insists that the number of clocks is precisely exact. Lewis is startled by a rustling sound, and Jonathan informs him that it is emanating from a disturbed cuckoo bird. A slim woman emerges from a doorway, and Jonathan introduces her as his neighbor, Mises Zimmerman. As the two neighbors bicker, Lewis senses peculiar energies emanating from the house. Jonathan suggests to Lewis that he can have cookies for dinner and urges him to abandon the strict rules he's been used to following. However, later that night, Lewis is disturbed from his sleep by a loud metallic clash. He sneaks out of his room to investigate and finds Jonathan listening to the wall. Then a figurine suddenly pops out of the wall art and begins to laugh maniacally at Lewis. Frightened, Lewis quickly runs back to his room. The following morning, Lewis observes Jonathan and Mises Zimmerman engaged in a loud conversation about entering the wall. Jonathan humorously sent for Lewis to attend school, leaving him suspicious of his uncle's intentions. At school, Lewis tries to join the basketball team but discovers that he's not skilled at playing. Then he decided to play cricket and after playing cricket with a boy named Tarby, Lewis learns that the house he's living in is rumored to be haunted as a man reportedly died there. Later on, Lewis has a vivid dream where he sees his deceased mother who tells him about to discover a book and a key, and tells him that he's in danger. When Lewis asks for clarification, she asks if he can hear the ticking sound. Suddenly, Lewis wakes up and hears footsteps, prompting him to follow the source of the noise. Lewis becomes frightened and confused as he observes the bizarre occurrences in the house, and his anxiety mounts when he catches sight of Jonathan striking a wall with an axe. In a panic, he rushes to his room and hastily packs his things. The portrait on the wall warns him against leaving and a chair obstructs his path towards the door. After that Jonathan appears behind Lewis, calming him down and telling him that everything is fine. Jonathan reassures Lewis that he is not going to harm him with an axe, and invites him into the library to reveal some truths about himself. Jonathan says that he is a good witch and house was owned by his friend Isaac and his wife Selina, who were also good witches and that he inherited the house after their deaths. Jonathan reveals that Isaac was also a warlock like him, but he passed away a year ago and now trying to retrieve his lost clock from the house. Meanwhile, Lewis pleads with Jonathan to teach him the ways of a warlock. Jonathan gives Lewis some books and tells him to read them before he can teach him anything. Lewis inquires if he would have to fight any evil spirits to become a warlock. Jonathan responds that he won't have to do it for a while. A purple spider suddenly appears at the door, startling Lewis and Jonathan. However, Jonathan quickly explains that the spider actually belongs to Zimmerman, whose spells have been rebounded wrong lately. While Jonathan is reading a book about Isaac's life, he cautions Lewis not to open a certain cabinet that is secured with spells under any circumstances. 
Zimmerman comes in and informs them that she couldn't find the clock in the crawl space. Later, Tarby observes a group of girls teasing Lewis about his goggles and tries to persuade him to remove them. Lewis decides to take off his goggles after Tarby's urging, and shortly after, Jonathan arrives in his vehicle. And today is the full moon so it's the first attempt of Lewis at magic spells. However, Jonathan advises Lewis that his attitude is more crucial than the spells themselves. Jonathan shows Lewis something even more strange and unusual to capture his attention. After blowing the saxophone to annoy the dogs in the neighborhood, Jonathan then shows Lewis another trick. He points to the still water in a fountain and tells Lewis to tap it. When Lewis taps the water, little stars suddenly shoot out of it and fill the sky with a magical solar system. Lewis is curious about Jonathan's sudden appearance and questions why he has never seen him before. Jonathan reveals that he was the black swan of his family due to his poor relationship with his father, and Lewis shares that he also feels like an a black swan. Lewis begins practicing magic and performs his first successful spell by changing the color of a caged cat's hair from white to rainbow colors. He then attempts to rise up Jonathan, which succeeds, but he is not confident of how to bring him back down. Lewis accidentally directs water from a tap onto an annoying kid's face and unintentionally channels energy into a moving chair. Meanwhile, Jonathan expresses concern about the clock on the wall, but Zimmerman reassures him that they will locate it before it can cause harm to Lewis. Over time, Lewis' magical abilities improve. Lewis uses magic for everyday tasks such as making his bed and creating a TV to watch Captain Midnight when he goes back to school. Tarby, who has won the school elections, feels uncomfortable hanging out with Lewis due to their differences. However, Lewis manages to convince him to walk home together. During the walk, Lewis offers to teach Tarby magic tricks that could help him in his sports games. Meanwhile, back at home, Jonathan discovers the location of the missing clock and when he lifts the arm of a statue. The passage is hidden in the mouth of a lion statue. Jonathan proceeds through the secret passage and finds himself in a spacious big room. The source of the nighttime noises seems to be the huge structure located in the room. Jonathan discovers a chart on a table and he becomes very excited. Meanwhile, in the library, Lewis and Tarby are searching for a spell to improve Lewis's curveball, but Tarby disregards Jonathan's warning and opens a forbidden cabinet. Inside, he finds a book on black magic where the pictures were showing that they can revive anyone again with the help of this. Lewis returns the black magic book to the forbidden cabinet and then he angry on Tarby and say him to leave the house. Meanwhile, Jonathan and Zimmerman decipher the meaning of an illustration on the chart that Jonathan found in the secret room. Lewis's mother again comes in his dream and brings up the topic of the book. She suggests that Lewis could win Tarby's trust on him about magic if he were to use the book. The following day, Lewis manages to persuade Tarby to try magic with him once again, but this time he makes a promise to revive the dead back to life. Lewis takes the book without permission and meets Tarby at the cemetery. Using the book as a guide, they locate the specific grave they need. Tarby retreats to a safe distance while Lewis continues to cast the spell. However, when the tomb begins to shake, a hand of a dead man comes out from his grave. Tarby becomes frightened and leaves Lewis behind. After returning the book and going to bed, Lewis wakes up the next day only to find out that his magical powers are no longer working. Upon reaching the ground floor, Jonathan notices a group of statues assembled on the first floor, and each one is echoing the same line, he's back. He rushes to the graveyard and discovers that the burial vault of Isaac has been opened. Jonathan requests Zimmerman's assistance, as he feels incapable of confronting Isaac by himself. However, Zimmerman refuses and advises him to disclose the truth to Lewis instead. Jonathan expresses his reluctance, stating that Lewis is just a young boy. Zimmerman suggests that she can still wield a hammer, and they proceed to play horseshoes near the front entrance. As Jonathan heads off to retrieve more horseshoes, he notices that the enormous wall painting has transformed into an image of each of them lying in separate coffins. Right before Lewis is about to reveal what he did, Zimmerman intervenes and warns that the culprit will face dire consequences once caught. Upon hearing Zimmerman's words, Lewis scared and Lewis decides not to disclose anything further and heeded Jonathan's suggestion to remain under Mises Zimmerman's care, temporarily. While at Mises Zimmerman's house, Lewis realizes that she is incapable of producing magic sparks. Lewis comes across a photograph of a performance where Jonathan and Isaac appeared together. 
Mises Zimmerman elaborates that the two were once inseparable friends until Isaac went to Germany to fight in a war and returned, as a more awful magician from there. Upon his return, Isaac deserted Jonathan and married a malevolent witch named Selina. Mises Zimmerman informs Lewis that there is a belief that Isaac murdered his wife to perform a blood ritual that involved creating a key from human bone. While at school, Lewis attempts to discuss what happened at the cemetery with Tarby. Tarby warns Lewis that Jonathan is in significant trouble because of their actions, but advises him to act as if nothing happened. Tarby then threatens to harm Lewis if he reveals anything, promising to break his arms. Upon Lewis' refusal to comply, Tarby strikes him with a punch, causing him to collapse onto the ground. As he falls, Lewis catches a glimpse of the open book, reading the word indomitable from the page. Feeling inspired, Lewis heads back home to Jonathan's. Lewis walks into the library and notices the chart laid out on the table. Suddenly, the doors shut, and the books in the library begin to fly around, causing harm to Lewis. Upon hearing Lewis cries for assistance, Zimmerman and Jonathan rush to his aid. Zimmerman then retrieves the chart from the table. Lewis informs them that he can decipher the chart thanks to his knowledge gained from the show Captain Midnight, and his proficiency in card tricks helps him break the code. Jonathan deduces that the clock is, in fact, a doomsday clock that will cause everything to run in reverse, eventually resulting in people growing younger and younger until they eventually disappear. When they arrive home, they discover that the house has been utterly destroyed from the foundation up to the roof. Jonathan speculates that Isaac was come here and searching for the bone key, and they attempt to destroy it, but they are unsuccessful as it does not even melt. Lewis confesses to Jonathan that he revived Isaac from the dead, but Jonathan is outraged and decides to send Lewis home, despite the child's pleas and tears. Zimmerman comforts Lewis, assuring him that she will talk to Jonathan and convince him to change his mind, before asking him to wait downstairs. Zimmerman goes upstairs to talk to Jonathan, and although she tries to persuade him, Jonathan admits that he is afraid for Lewis and believes that their home is no place for a child. Zimmerman reminds him that abandoning Lewis would be like how he had abandoned his little sister, referring to Lewis' mother in her words. After their discussion, Zimmerman angrily calls Jonathan a coward and leaves the room. Lewis' attention is caught by the yapping of Mises, Hanchet's dog, Marmalade, that can be heard from outside. After spotting Isaac inside Mises Hanchet's house, Lewis sprints over to notify her, even though she continues to ask him multiple questions. Lewis moves Mises Hanchet from her own house to Jonathan's. As soon as Jonathan and Zimmerman arrive at the house, summoned by Lewis, they all enter together inside. As Zimmerman is about to leave the room, the door suddenly locks itself. Meanwhile, Jonathan is attempting to unlock the door while Isaac arrives at the main entrance and knocks. Lewis instructs Mises Hanchet to avoid opening the door, but she ignores his advice and insists on doing so. Upon opening the door, Isaac enters and greets them. Mises Hanchet then reveals that she was, in fact, Selina all along. As this happens, to everyone's amazement, Marmalade, who was a dog, transforms into a rat. Lewis expresses his belief that both Isaac and Selina had died, but Selina reveals that the bone key was made from the remains of the real Mises Hanchet, and that she had not actually died. Selina reveals that she had hidden when Jonathan and Zimmerman entered the house on the night that Isaac died. Selina's head starts shaking again, and then she transforms into Lewis' mother. Lewis comes to the realization that his mother was the one who used to appear in his dreams. Lewis realizes that Selina couldn't physically approach the cabinet, so she had to communicate with him through his dreams. Isaac tells Lewis that he needs to retrieve the bone key for them. Jonathan and Zimmerman manage to leave the room and head to a secret hideout, only to find themselves caught in a trap set up by Isaac. Lewis is trapped in a cage hanging from the ceiling, and if the cage is opened, sharp blades below will harm him. A rat is gnawing on the rope above the cage, hoping to break it until it cut off. Isaac demands that Lewis give him the key, but Lewis refuses and tells him about his time in the Black Forest and how he gained his magical powers. It is revealed that Isaac didn't actually meet a witch in the Black Forest, but instead met Azazel, the fourth prince of hell. Azazel offered to give Isaac his powers in exchange for a blood sacrifice, and Isaac agreed. Isaac attempts to use magic to extract the key from Jonathan's pocket while threatening Zimmerman, but she surprises him by unleashing a powerful spell to prevent him from doing so. Zimmerman intervenes and prevents Selina from obtaining the key while rescuing Lewis from the dangerous trap set by Isaac. 
Jonathan attempts to take the key, but Isaac unleashes a powerful blast of light that strikes him. Zimmerman rescues Jonathan from the attack, but Isaac manages to get hold of the key and escapes with Selina. The trio is pursued by the toys and jack-o'-lanterns as they get away from the house. After Lewis determines the location of the hex, they rush back to the house. Zimmerman uses her magic to handle the attacking toys, but she fails to reach the hex. As a result, Jonathan attempts to open the clock but is transformed into a baby. The responsibility to stop the clock now falls solely on Lewis as Zimmerman is unable to reach the hex and Jonathan has been turned into a baby. Lewis is instructed by the magic ball to say goodbye, and he randomly threw the ball into the clock. After Lewis throws the magic ball into the clock, it reverses time, stopping the clock and in the end, Lewis manages to save the day by stopping the clock. Jonathan is turned back into an adult, and he and Lewis succeed in defeating Isaac and Selina. The house is restored to its former state, and Lewis is welcomed into his new family with Jonathan and Zimmerman. The movie ends with them celebrating Halloween together as a family. Thanks for watching guys. Love you all. And hit the like button if you enjoy.